Nations have been urged to do more to fight, fight climate change, but expectations from critics are low. Here's the summit president, Sultan Ahmed al Jaber, speaking earlier. The road we have been on will not get us to our destination in time. The science has spoken. It has been loud and clear. It has confirmed that the moment is now to find a new road. Our environment editor, Valerie de Kemp, is uh, covering the summit in Dubai. Uh, she has more from the summit. Valerie, take it away. Well, the COP presidency was officially passed on to Sultan al Jaber earlier today in those images that you were watching from his predecessor, Egypt Samit Shukri, in that ceremony earlier today. And that marks the formal opening of COP28, which will last for two weeks. Al Jaber did share a few words. He also said uh, that the UAE's COP28 team uh, was very bold in their decision to proactively engage with oil and gas companies. He also said that many of them had already adopted net zero targets. Perhaps an attempt to flip the narrative after uh, the COP28 presidency has come under fire following allegations that the COP28 team made plans, that they planned to use the summit in order to pursue oil deals. Now, for more, I'm joined by Romain uh, Wallalen, Global Policy Lead at Oil Change International. Thank you for being on the program. Thank you for having me. Just a very quick question. Are you surprised by those allegations? And do you believe, are you concerned that they will have an impact on the negotiations? The real issue here is we shouldn't have to wonder whether the allegations are true or not. We shouldn't have to wonder whether the COP28 president used this position as the shepherd of the climate negotiations uh, to pursue fossil fuel deals because he's also the CEO of one of the largest oil and gas companies in the world. Um, so we are facing a situation of, of staggering conflict of interest, and we've denounced that for months now. Um, and it's, it's akin to letting the CEO of a tobacco company run an anti-lung cancer negotiations. We wouldn't accept that. So why are we accepting it at COP28? So now the COP28 president has a choice, and it's a simple choice. Either he sets aside um, the, the, you know, the, the interests of his oil and gas company and the fossil fuel industry in general, and focuses on delivering what this COP is all about, which is phasing out all fossil fuels, or it's going to be a, it's going to be a failure, and it's going to to you know raise alarms about the capture of this climate process. So the the choice is his. Many people are saying that success here at COP28 will come down to a potential agreement on phasing out fossil fuels, as you were saying. Is there enough momentum for a deal of that sort, a fossil fuel phase out? I think there has never been more momentum than now. Uh, it, it really is the fossil fuel COP, and it's about time. 28 COPs without addressing the root cause of the climate crisis, which is our continued reliance on fossil fuels, is not acceptable for this process. So now, for the first time, there is you know, a real desire by a number, a large number of countries actually, to secure an agreement on all fossil fuels and not just coal, um, and, and to see that enshrined in the climate negotiations. Uh, obviously, it's going to be a difficult conversation um, a lot of parties will, re will, you know, probably refuse, or not necessarily refuse, but at least, you know, have strong objections. Let's say, uh, but the negotiations have, have progressed tremendously on this issue over the past few years. So we're really hopeful that at least this COP can send a strong signal on fossil fuels. Definitely, it is going to be a tough sell. Um, Different countries, they position themselves very, you know, in very different ways when it comes to a fossil fuel phase out. Uh, is there a single country or maybe a group of countries that have enough influence to really block progress on this issue here at COP28? Well, it's a UN process, which means that uh, decisions are made by consensus. So obviously, a lot of countries uh, could potentially block. Uh, we've seen some countries be very reluctant to engage in, in the notion of phasing out fossil fuels. Saudi Arabia is one of them. Russia is another, unsurprisingly. But, you know, we focus a lot on these countries as, as you know, fossil fuel producers. But there, what we tend to forget in these negotiations is that the countries that are actually increasing oil and gas production the most are not these countries. It's the United States uh, and it's other countries, rich countries like Norway, the UK or Australia, which, you know, 
on, on, you know, on the surface, uh, pretend to agree to a phase out of fossil fuels when at home they actually increase oil and gas production. Um, so I think there's a lot of reckoning that needs to happen for these rich countries uh, at this COP, uh, and we hope that they can manage to, to find an agreement. And that also boils down to the notion of what the COP presidency will do. One of his biggest um, uh, contributions to, to, to this uh, process would be to convince other oil and gas producing countries to actually come to the table and agree to a phase out of fossil fuels. And we hope he's going to do that. Romain Wallalen, uh, policy officer at Oil Change International. Thank you for being on the program. Uh, as you can tell, it is going to be a very tough uh, sell, tough negotiations to actually get uh, potentially an agreement on phasing out fossil fuels. Uh, we'll be following that uh, for the next few days here uh, in Dubai. All right, Valerie, thank you very much. Valerie Dick Kemp reporting there, uh, COP28.